Good evening YouTube. Uh, today I would like to make a quick article on Danny Hozak uh, addressing the Freedom Talk in Red Deer and um, I would like to divulge with you the speech that he gave to Andrew Lawton from True North. Um, so I'll let the the commentary go through and then uh, I'll give my comments afterwards. Thank you for your time and your attention. In short, this is about the future of our country or potentially of two countries. As you know, we have uh, three groups of people here, some of them talking, making the case for separation, some of them defending federalism, and another group saying irrespective of whether you have one country or whether you have two, you have to deal with your neighbors. And that's what we're going to be doing today is talking about dealing with our neighbors, meaning America, meaning First Nations, meaning other provinces. Do you see it as being a, a separatist conference or is it a conference about separatism? And is there a difference between those two things right now? Well, there's, there's absolutely a difference. Like we're talking about both sides of the issue. Well, what we want to do is, uh, so often what happens is everybody gets in a different room talking about what they want to do. We, we, our goal was to have everybody here, the people who were quite passionate about separation, the people who were equally passionate about defending federalism, defending our country. We wanted them to all be in the same room, hearing each other's arguments and saying, oh, maybe I could understand that. Maybe we could help with that. What would you say has been the biggest theme? Because there's a lot of anger in Alberta right now. There's a lot of frustration. But at this event, what would you say ha have been the biggest themes that have emerged as far as what people really want? Well, I, I think that the biggest theme is we're going to get this sorted out one way or the other. I mean, I, and I think we're all, we're all resolved to that. I don't think we are united in what we think the answer is. But I think we all agree this cannot go on. And we want it sorted out sooner rather than later. What do you think the timeline is if we are going towards an independence movement and it is going to grow and gain steam? What do you think the steps need to be that happen over the next year and the next two to three years? Well, I, I think the steps are like I think we need to, to to set a date for a vote on separation. We'll set the date and then everybody knows it's, it's like final exams. Say final exams are June 30th. We'll be marking your papers based on what you've done before then. And so the people who believe in separation, they can go out into our province and talk to their friends and neighbors about how they think we would separate, what the challenges are, and what they do, intend to do to meet those challenges. The people who, you know, continually, uh, the people who are here defending federalism say we can fix the country, we say fine, we're going to hear some of those ideas this morning, you know, ideas on fixing federalism, say let's just say we have five or six things that would fix federalism, well, fine, get busy because we're going to be voting at the end of, let's just say, June, so you better get it done because the day we're voting, if you haven't done any of them, you know how we're going to be voting. If you've done four out of the five, you might say, you know, they're trying pretty hard, I really think they do want to fix the country, let's, let's stay. Do you see what I mean? But I think the point is we want to set a date for the vote so we know the one way or the other this is going to be over, and then everybody can work backwards from that, talk about how much work you've got to do, who you have to talk to, and go forward from there. One thing I notice is that there isn't a huge number of MLAs here or members of parliament that are currently serving. Do you think there's a fear among elected representatives of it going anywhere near this question, despite the fact that Albertans are asking the question? Yes. You know, one of the most uh, either astute or cynical things that uh, Ralph Klein said was, show me a big enough parade and I'd be happy to lead it. And quite frankly, I, I, I like it to me it is totally disappointing that they're not here you I mean they're supposed to be our leaders you know, would be jason kenny has set up a panel of people to travel the province province and find out what albertans want i think it's fair to say that we've got 350 of probably the most you know patriotic albertans or patriotic canadians in the country today they're all here they might as well have been here listening you know what i mean and uh, and uh, you know i guess i wouldn't presume to say why they're not here you know i mean in, in fairness uh, drew barnes is here my mla garth roswell is here uh, i i Donna Kennedy Glantz, who is on the fair, fair panel, whatever they're calling that panel, she was away. She got in late last night. She's hoping to be here today. So some of them are planning to be here. The ones who aren't planning to be here, I don't know why, but uh, we'll be talking to them about that. What would you say your message is to Canadians that are uncomfortable with the idea of a Canada without Alberta? Well, I guess I would, I would say, like, we love you. You know, we, we love this country. We don't want it to be two countries. But we're not going to put up with what we've had in the past. And I mean, you know, like, I mean, we're trying to be impartial as a group. But I, I talk to enough Albertans to know that that's what they're thinking is, okay, if you want it fixed, that's fine. But this is not going to go on the way it is. 
Now, as you heard from Danny, this conference itself does not pick a side. So, I just wanted to talk a little bit quickly about um, this man. And essentially, a little bit about the conference itself what I suspect was its purpose or what I heard was its purpose is is that they're there not exactly for the purpose of debating separation but rather alternatives to separation as well um, federalism despite uh, Mr. Hozak's uh, response there's still a lot of loyalty to keeping Canada intact when he talks about the MLAs not attending, but there are a few MLAs in attendance, but uh, for the most part, a poor showing for MLAs. It's because Jason Kenney, and I might have said this in previous videos, is a federalist. He has a lot of government experience in Ottawa, served under Stephen Harper. He was one of the best candidates for the leadership of the Conservative Party itself, but abdicated because Harper and him, and I don't know how many people know it, and but I don't believe this is a rumor. I believe that they met together and discussed what would happen if the NDP ran Alberta for another four years. And I think their conclusion was that will be in so much debt we'd never recover so in addition to the entire infrastructure of the government being corrupt like in the case of uh, Jim Ellis and i taking advantage of the uh, I think the Alberta Energy Board so Kenny left to essentially run in Alberta as premier and take over um, so that government would be fiscally responsible again. Not unlike the Ralph Klein days, but far, far less um, extreme, let's say. So, but during his time under Stephen Harper's reign, you learn how to be thinking of Canada as one and I would say that's why Harper was in power as long as he was uh, why he is the first Prime Minister that represented the West's interests but he was able to govern the whole country effectively um, for as long as possible I um, I don't want to get into that too much, but I just I'm trying to explain to you the underlying reasons why Kenny would not be a separatist, and why I think when he addresses the media on the issue of separation that he is disingenuous. Quebec is the best example of a province getting leverage and getting access to what they want, not what they need, what they want, in addition to what they need, but. It's a demand that, it's like a deal that they can't say no to, you know. The offer that cannot be refused, because if, we'll, if you don't, we'll separate. And Quebec is, I like, there have been a few Quebecers who have commented on my YouTube channel, and, and uh, you know, I cannot speak for all of Quebec, but I would say Quebec is, at least politically, sure of what it wants in a leader and sure of what it, it, it wants for separation or no and I think that the fact that the Parti Quebecois has already got uh, you know a new leadership and has taken back seats in the House of Commons for 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 that party you know it's indicative that uh, once again Quebec will do what they have to to gain leverage and Jason Kenney could take a page out of that book I look at separation similar to what Danny said 
we all don't agree on the means to resolve the issue in Alberta and by extension Saskatchewan. We must not forget that they're, we're closer to Saskatchewan than, than we know. Um, but essentially, we don't agree on the solution for the problem. One solution could be separate, another solution could be find leverage um, so that we can deal with it at a federal level. Um, essentially, my worry is the carbon tax and equalization, but it, it goes deeper than that because, of course, we all know if we separate, the pensions will be gone. And a lot of other things that the, the government is bringing in for us is, is going to be gone. But the advantage that we have, this is why Kenny, I think, is holding back. Because I think he believes he can get his way with the carbon tax and he can renegotiate the equalization. I think that's why he's so calm about it. He's He should be holding a referendum if he didn't feel that the fight let's say was going in favor for Alberta then I think after that he'd bring out the big guns and say you know we're going to separate and push for separation and get the referendum going I think he's hoping Butts not Trudeau because Trudeau is a puppet Butts is smart enough to negotiate with them and essentially give in because they have no representation here and it wouldn't be if Jason Kenney introduced the referendum, I believe that, generally speaking, Alberta would be in mass support of something like that. But I cannot be 100% sure because maybe there are people in this province who don't feel as strongly about it as me. I do feel, as time goes on and from how I've looked in the past and how I've looked at history, separation is part of the solution if we cannot achieve a mutual no not even that a fair solution that is extremely beneficial to Alberta because as far as I'm concerned Alberta has been screwed over ever since Pierre Trudeau, Trudeau introduced the National Energy Board and on top of that, the equalization has gone on since that time. And imagine how many billions of dollars that Alberta has, has given in equalization now. I don't have the exact figure, so if you have that, that figure, comment in the, in the comment section and, and, and let me know. I would love to know. Precisely or even imprecisely, what would be your guess as how much Alberta has paid in equalization payments? I want people to understand that we cannot idly dismiss the fact that we've been screwed over 10 billion times, 100 billion times. It doesn't matter essentially the reason why that we've had overwhelming support for the conservatives here in the west and support for Shear, even though I, I felt that he's actually a terrible leader but anyhow that's besides the point um it's because that that people are desperate and people want to, people need to see a change in the tide the tide has to turn it cannot keep going on like this. I keep hearing that everywhere. You look at Calgary now. Calgary is a ghost town. Like there have been so many businesses that have moved away. Oil and otherwise. Who directly benefited from oil. It, it's, it, it's so different from the way it was 13 years ago. It's so, so different. It, it's completely changed. The only thing that happens is if the, the mayor of Calgary decides, okay, we're going to build an interchange here or a bridge there or an art project here. That's it. It's make work. That's, that's, it's not actually driving the economy. 
it's just so that the mayor can say that, you know, oh, I've done this and that, but he's done nothing. There's no incentive for business to, to work here and every incentive for them to move across the border to Houston. So, I'm going to put my foot down and say the separation idea should become more popular and should be used as leverage to help Alberta get a very, very excellent and beautiful deal for us extremely beneficial for us and by extension Saskatchewan and whomever else wants to negotiate but I, I believe Alberta and Saskatchewan are very closely linked like brothers um, so I would like to see balls in Jason Kenney and Scott Moe in negotiation because if they don't have balls and they don't have power behind what they they're trying to introduce then they won't be taken seriously anywhere they need power they, they need more than just talking they need to show resolve in what they're doing that's why the the referendum is necessary because then Kenny can say well you know Alberta's spoken you know, we're going to separate, or Scott Moe can come to uh, Trudeau and say, you know, we're going to separate. I've had the referendum and so on. Like, it's it's not talking anymore. It's actual physical fact that you can find it. You can see it. People are angry. Give us what we're asking or we're gone. You know, it, it, it cannot be just some... Uh, something fictional it vanished in the thin air it, it had to be some tangible thing they need balls i look at at, at at all the leaders that's what they lack except for maxime bernier that guy's got balls he, he you, you you see he he don't doubt what he talk about it's it's like you, you need confidence essentially and conviction in what you're talking about and it, 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 for me Jason Kenny is still trying to play too much neutral almost like he, he's well he's buying his time he's, 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 he's I think he's hoping that they're not that stupid uh, to force separation let's put it like that So this organization is trying to get ground for Wexit, trying to make, uh, essentially trying to inform those that attended the event, alternative ways, I suppose, and also very tangible ways that we could achieve what we want without separation. And then of course the talk for separation, but I wasn't there. I looked at it like something that still needs to mature in its ideal and its ideas part of me it's good that uh, that they're having the discussion and that uh, people are taking part but as you saw there MLAs they still treat them sort of like a movement underground no legitimacy yet in the public uh, well in the arena that matters let's put it like that if things don't change Wexit is inevitable I don't see any other way that it could be that we achieve what we need to get at the very least what we need to get I think it's way past that it, it, there is recompense for many many years of of treating alberta very badly and i don't say we we want revenge because alberta people don't want revenge but they do want fairness but it's like they have to up the ante you have to to be more aggressive in what you want so that you achieve it it cannot be just talk 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 nothing Time is wasted that way, you, you know. 
<laughs> Kenny needs to be clear and he needs to do something tangible in this province to show Ottawa that we mean business and we're not playing games. We're not trying to, to misrepresent what we want or how we're feeling. It, it, it's more than that. So I applaud this group. I applaud them for, for trying to, to make headway. But like you said, Alberta's, they know there's a, a, a deep problem, but they don't agree on the solution. That path is still not figured out yet. But it's up to uh, Jason Kenney to decide what kind of future we're going to have. Otherwise, he may not be re-elected. I don't know. We require strong leadership. That's the thing we're lacking most. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.